Hey, Terry Jones. I hate these upshot camera views. <laughs> I'm so vain. Hey, Deborah. Can you all hear me okay? Let me know. Thank you, Terry. Let's see, we got another minute or so here. Thank you, Deborah. I haven't got a third one. Hey, Kimberly. Glad you all can't see my desk. It's a mess. Hey, Karen, Karen Willis. Hey, how are things in Central City? <laughs> Hello, Don Edwards and Wayne. Clap my mug. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, oh, Karen, I'm sorry you're bored over there. There are times I'd love to be, you know, love some boredom, but no, I, I hope you're able to get out soon. Um, Kara had an appointment this morning, and so I am once again attempting to fill her shoes. Uh, it's a tough job. But this morning, I wanted to bring. I've been I've been asked to speak to the elders this week in our elder meeting. It'll, it'll be a brief talk about um, the role of music in the church, um, and I'm going to come at a little bit from a historical pr perspective, with trying not to bore everybody on Sunday. But I won't go into all that today. But I thought, well, this gives a it's a good time maybe for this. This time, this devotional to use a, a devotion from or based on one of our familiar hymns. And several of you, if not all of you, probably know the story behind the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. And um, it's, it, the text is written by Horatio Spafford in, uh, in around 17, uh, excuse me, 1873. And, and what I have, and I will credit um, Preston Norman um, for his, his devotional material. And so some of this I'm going, I'm going to read. Um, I will try not just to make it kind of a lecture, but if you have comments, I'll try to catch them on the, as they scroll in the bottom of my phone here. So I'm still have, I still cannot get my, for some reason, my, I, my Apple iMac Safari does not want to, Use my will not let me use the camera for Facebook Live, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. But anyway, we're good to go. I did I cleaned the camera on my phone, so hopefully I'm not as cloudy as I was last week. 
But let me give you a little history on this. And uh, it was written in 1873 by Horatio Spafford. The hymn was conceived after a relatively short period in Spafford's life when he had a just a ton of tragic events unfold. And uh, it was really started in 1871, and Spafford had just entered this, uh, this season of his life that would go on for some time. He and his wife, Anna, had just lost their four-year-old son. And not long after that, the, the Great Fire of Chicago broke out and burned up several of the properties that Spafford Spafford had invested in. He was a, he was a, a Chicago businessman. Um, and then uh, later on in, in 1873, the whole country suffered an economic downturn, which just exacerbated uh, Spa, uh, Spafford's whole financial situation. And it was in this time that they, de they decided it was a good time to, to go to Europe and see family and their friend, uh, the pastor, Dr. Dwight L. Moody, um, and uh, but as they were to uh, coming up just just a few days before their departure on the ship, um, some issues came up with some of Spafford's properties, and he stayed back and sent his wife and their four daughters. Uh, uh, on ahead of him and, and intended to come on just a few days later. Um, and as, as Anna Spafford and her children crossed the Atlantic Ocean, their ship collided with another ship. Uh, the wreckage sank and claimed the lives of their four daughters. And uh, Mrs. Spafford survived and was rescued. And when she arrived in Europe nine days later, it was there she sent a telegraph to her husband, which read, Saved alone, what shall I do? And, uh, well, first of all, just to unpack the what impact that would, would have on, you know, parents is just un unimaginable to lose four children like that. Um, well, upon receiving the telegraph, uh, Spafford left Chicago to go bring his wife home from, from Europe. And uh, as, as they were crossing the ocean, um, the captain knew he was aboard and let him know the approximate location about where the, the other ship had gone down and where his daughters had drowned. And it was there that he began to write the stanzas of, of this hymn. And I'll just read, uh, most of you know it, but just in case, uh, the first stanza is, is when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know it is well it is well with my soul and in the second stanza though satan should buffet and though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul and then my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And there are other stanzas that we are traditionally left out um, of the of the hymnals that we use. But I love, of course, we all love the last. Um, and Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord will descend. A song in the night, O oh my soul. So there's been some editing that's gone into our, our current use. But that is the, that's the, the bulk of the, of the hymn text. Um, now, most, again, most of you are very familiar with this. And uh, it was born out of a, a, a terrible time of grief in their life and uh, but what's often less known is the rest of Spafford's life about the great he, he suffered many other tragedies in his life while here on earth uh, but all the trials that he endured he, he never it never overshadowed his faith in Christ and several days after the loss of his daughters uh, while traveling to bring his wife back he wrote this letter to his sister-in-law which which said on Thursday last, we passed 
over the spot where she went down in mid-ocean, the waters three miles deep. But I do not think of our dear ones there. They are safe, folded, the dear lambs. And um, I just, I can't imagine the devastation again, being a father. Um, but that faith closer resembles um, another one that we have in Scripture, and that is, um, I've always thought of Job when, uh, when thinking about Spafford. And, he, and Job was a man that had it all. He had wealth. He had a beautiful family. He had a huge estate. Uh, but in a short time, it was all taken away from him. And, uh, and for the, if, if you've ever done a study in Job, you know that for the duration of the book, and, and uh, Job's you know, suffering is profound. It's, it's just off the charts. But, so his, but also his faith, through it all, he, he lost his family, he lost his fortune, uh, painful boils, insomnia. Uh, his sh his faith was never shaken, and uh, and he continued to declare the goodness of God in, in all that in all that he did. Um, and the story of suffering is not unique, you know, not to any of us, not in Scripture or in modern life. Uh, we see terrible, horrible things happen each day, and many times it's, it's we we just cannot arrive at the or reconcile with the why it happened i think about the the uh, uh the condominium that collapsed well, well we were in a condominium in gulf shores when that happened and uh, on the 14th floor and you know just why would god allow we all ask that question um you know why would god allow things uh to happen like this and you know disease and why would god allow so many horrible things to happen. Um, it's a it's a fundamental question I think as as Christians that we all ask at some point. Um, the answer is, you know, like Job and and Horatio Spafford, that God is completely, you know, their belief was that God was completely sovereign over all things, and you know, even though we don't understand it, His will is perfect, and, and Job understood, and. It's not always clear to us why or how, um, but we're, uh, we're then His will is not always what we're expecting or what we want, but it's it's somehow some some mysterious way it's right. And uh, in life, it's easy for us to see those moments and be broken by them, and and we are, and that's perfectly natural. And but and to spend time dwelling on the pain and suffering, and it's 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 natural to do that. But as believers, we have the hope, and if we have hope and a future, and we can look forward to what's coming down the road. Uh, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering, what, what God has provided for us on the other side is infinitely better uh, than any pain or life we could experience here. And I know that that's hard to take, especially if you're in the middle of it. Um, but Spafford recognized this, and it's what gave him the comfort he needed in the face of tragedy to write these beautiful words that we have that we continue to um, that we continue to to sing and and take comfort in so that that hymn has always been always meant so much to me and I hope it will continue for generations to come um, a lot of strength is drawn from Isaiah 40 it tells us that they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with eagles with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So have faith, believer. The trials of this life are short and insignificant, but they don't always seem insignificant to us. But they are short in comparison to eternity. And so if you're facing a season of suffering, troubles, heartache, you know, don't let it steal your faith. And that would be my you know, drawn everything. Just let me encourage you to to keep walking, to keep moving, and ha having um, having been through some trials myself. And like I say, we've all been there. That's that's the key. Is just to keep keep your focus, you know, um, and give yourself time. Give yourself time to heal and move, and press into God more than ever before, and and know that His like I say, His will is not always for us to understand, but uh, 
but he has us in his care. So I hope this has been, I know this has been short, and it was it was meant to be. Uh, anybody, uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can fire them off there. In the, in the, I, I didn't get to see um, some of those, but I don't, I don't think I can scroll back through that. Um, I hope you all have a great week and uh, continue. Uh, right, right. God never does anything, you know, to hers or, or we're, we're not, uh, that's not intent. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, most of the things I've been through, uh, and I was taught this by my the pastor I grew up with, and he always said, what, whatever you go through now, you will use. You will use at some point, whether you're, a, whether you're a professional minister or whether you're a lay person, ministering, you know, ministering to people and your friends and in your sphere of influence. It will, um, that's going to, that's going to prepare you to minister to someone else. And um, I hope you'll keep that in mind, that what you're going through now will allow you to give comfort to someone else down the road. And I can truly say that is the case. It's it's happened every time. So uh, with that, I'm going to bid you all a very pleasant day. And and if I will, uh, I'll close this in prayer. Father, we are grateful for gifted and talented people like Horatio Spafford who wrote those words in, in such a horrible time in his life. And, and we, some of us may be able to, to relate to that pain. I cannot. Um, but thank you so much that that written, you know, over 100 years ago, uh, almost 150 years ago, was so pertinent and and speaks to us even now over that length of time. And for those who are going through um, heartache and hurt and despair, and there's so much of that in the world, we pray that we can be use our experiences to minister to those uh, to those people. And we pray for all those that are oppressed, all those that have no voice and uh, are in just situations that seem hopeless, that somehow we can get message to them that there is hope and this is not forever, but there is better coming. It's all in the name of Christ we pray it. Amen. Thank you all very much and have a wonderful day. Hope to see you Sunday or Wednesday, went down the road and, and uh, sometime and drop us a line. We'll see you all later. Take care.